So in this video, let's add a tool to our character's hand, add a collider to that tool, and make it so that if the collider comes in contact with a harvestable object, that it will do something with that object. In this case, we'll start by destroying it, but later on we'll set it up so that we can actually harvest resources from the harvestable object. So let's start off by editing our gatherer character. Now, a, a tool object is something I'm gonna to wanna to actually put on a child game object. The tool is gonna somewhat be independent of the main gatherer character, but we still want it to track its position around on the screen. So it, as a child game object, it'll inherit the position, but we can have it have its own set of colliders and add extra scripts to it and so on and so forth. So I'm going to, in the prefab of our gatherer, add in a new game object. So I'll create a new empty object and I oh, would just call this tool for right now. Now, um, in order to show a tool or a sprite, let's add in a sprite renderer. And then let's find a tool from our project that we want to use. So you can basically use any sprite you want, but in this case, I have these single frame sprites like a copper ax which we can just drag and drop in here. So I'm gonna add this as the sprite. So when we add the sprite here, you can see that it's not really in the right position. So I'm gonna take the tool object and I'm gonna move it up to the player's hand. Now you'll see that uh, because we're sorting the player based on its pivot, which is somewhere down here, that it's gonna put the tool behind the player. So this is something we can uh, work with in the animator and make it so that depending on if the character is facing up, right, left, down, we'll set the sorting in layer as a custom forced sort for the tool to show above or behind the player. Uh, for right now, we'll just have it set there behind and we want to give a collision shape to this ax head. So let's add a component and I am gonna be looking for, I would say a box collider maybe. So let's do box collider 2D, edit the collider shape and stretch the sides to be roughly the size of the head. It doesn't need to be completely precise. It just needs to kind of make sense. And, and maybe we put it more on the right side of things since this is the part which is gonna be hitting a tree and this part is not. So whatever makes sense to you, as long as this collision shape comes in contact with the collision shape of the tree or whatever we're trying to harvest, it should work later on. Uh, the other thing we gotta change is making sure that it's set to is trigger mode because we're gonna be having uh, kind of an event happen when this object hits another object. Because this collider isn't gonna be used for physics, it's only gonna trigger something to happen on the other game object. So we want it to be a trigger. We don't want it to be a physics collider. So uh, let's finish up with that uh, trigger shape. And then we can go back out to game mode and we can see that we have uh, the tool there under our gatherer character. So right now the tool isn't gonna to be doing anything. In order for this to do something, we need to create a new script. So let's jump into the prefab on the tool game object. So I'm gonna add a component here and we can give this new script a name. To keep it simple, we could just call it tool and do new script and create an add. So in the project, we're gonna have this tool CS script and let's get rid of the start and update methods. What we actually need here is gonna be on trigger enter 2D. So when our tool comes in collider contact with a harvestable object, then we wanna do something to that harvestable object. We'll start just by destroying the harvestable object, but later it'll be the harvesting mechanics. So first off, we need to check if the other object is a harvestable object or has a component called harvestable on it. For that to work, we need to create a new uh, game object that has that script, the harvestable component. So let's go back out to the main scene and I am gonna grab an object from the pack. Maybe we go into grass here and I'll just drag a pine tree onto the scene. So let's just drag that in there, uh, let go. And maybe we just drag a pine tree into the scene. So I'm gonna drag this into the hierarchy and we see we got a new game object called tree pine here. I'll position it kind of where I want it to be. Or actually, no, I'll just leave it at zero zero for right now. And uh, let's start by creating a prefab for it. So in the project, I'll right click, create folder, and let's call this an objects folder. And here I'll create a harvestable folder. So just keeping things organized. So harvestable, so it's a type of harvestable object. Jump into harvestable, drag the pine tree into here. And now let's double click on tree pine. So for this object, 
we already have the sprite renderer that was added automatically when we dragged a sprite into the scene. We want to, of course, change the sprite sort point to pivot. So if I haven't set it up already, that'll be down here at the base of the tree. And let's add a component. And I'm going to call this harvestable. So uh, make sure it's, it's about harvestable. And then create an add, the new script. Move these scripts from the base folder into the scripts folder. So that's harvestable and tool. And now I want to go ahead and take the harvestable script. And I just want to um, open up the harvestable script and make sure it is being recognized properly. We're not going to need a update or start method. So I'll just delete that. And really, uh, harvestable just needs to serve as a tag for right now. So that's all the script we need. As long as it's attached to the tree pine, we can check that it has the component harvestable and do something to the tree. Now we can see that the tree is down here. Let's position it a little bit differently. Oh, of course, uh, right now the tree can't collide with anything because there's no collider. So let's uh, open up the prefab, add a component, and I'll call this a circle collider. So uh, the collider, right now it's the full shape of the tree, but we just want it at the base because we're going to swing the axe at the base of the tree. So let's lower the radius down and then offset the position to somewhere like there and maybe a little bit on X. So negative 0 0.1, 0, negative 0 0.01 X um, seems to position it pretty good. Maybe even zero, just like the center point there. Let me zoom in. I guess the right amount is half a pixel. So negative 0.005. And that positions it right in the center there of the uh, tree. Okay, um, now with this collider, we don't want it to be a trigger collider. This is an actual object in the scene. And, you know, given that that's the case, maybe we need it to be a lower radius. So 0 0.05, 0 0.04. Okay, that seems good for this. Uh, maybe it'll be a little hard for it to harvest with the axe initially, but we can always change this later. Oh, and lastly, the tree is also going to be a physics object in the game. So let's add a rigid body, rigid body 2D. Put it in static mode because the tree isn't going to move, but it should block the player. Now, if we go out, let's hit play and just make sure that it's working kind of as intended. And if we walk up to the tree, we can see that uh, the tree is blocking us from walking over it, but uh, only at the base of the tree. So we've got to get the sorting working at the top. You can see the uh, sorting point of the tree is right here, but it should be down there. So we can just edit the uh, tree sprite real quickly. So let's double click on tree pine and uh open up the image go to sprite editor and we need to change the pivot point from center to custom and move it down here to the base of the tree probably right around there hit apply okay uh that will mm -hmm. offset the tree's position in our scene a little bit um so really it would have been better if we did that first because you see that when you move the pivot point it moves the sprite and now the collision thing is down there so we'll have to edit the prefab a little bit change the offset i'll remove the y offset and then that puts it right on top of the pivot point and let's remove the x offset as well yeah that seems good for the collision shape there okay let's go back out hit play uh test the tree so we collide with the base and if we go behind the tree then we are actually physically behind the tree so uh sorting's working better now so that's cool now, the last thing we need to do is actually make it so that this tool can chop the tree by uh, having a collision occur here. So uh, let's jump into the gatherer. We go to the tool. Let's edit the tool script. And we want to check if we come into contact with a tree or a harvestable object. So for right now, uh, let's get the harvestable. Harvestable equals collision dot get component harvestable. And if harvestable does not equal null, if the... Uh, object we collided with is an actual harvestable object then we'll tell the harvestable object to get harvested so we'll do harvestable dot harvest um, and inside of here we could give it like a uh, damage value or something later on uh, but for right now we'll just leave that alone let's generate the harvest method inside of harvestable so control period and then generate the function then we go in here Got to make sure that this function is public so that it can be called from outside of here um, for any class. And then uh, the harvestable object, we're just going to destroy the game object. So when the tree gets harvested, the object disappears, which is really as basic as we can make it for right now. But it gives us a good starting point to test. So let's hit play. I'll walk around. The axe will hit the tree. And then the tree is gone. 
Of course, if we uh, duplicate the tree now a few times in the main scene, like so, then we can run around and uh, get rid of those trees. So that tree's gone, this tree's gone, and so on and so forth. So at least at a basic level, we can recognize that the trees are harvestable objects, and we have a tool which can interact with them. So that's going to be the stopping point for this video.